Hi, welcome to The Shed. Today I'm gonna to give you some tips and tricks on how to humanize your drums. If you want the sound of an acoustic drum set played by a real drummer with real drums and real cymbals, but you don't have the budget for a good drummer, real drums, real cymbals, a room to record it in, mics to record it in, and a, a nice interface with good preamps, then you can kind of fake it by knowing how a drummer thinks and by using the built-in sounds in your DAW. So I have a loop here, and I'm gonna play you the loop, and then I'm gonna play along with it as if I'm a drum machine. Now, uh, that sounded like there was a song going on and then there was a drum machine playing. And a good drum recording glues the song together. It gives the, the rhythmic underlayment and then you have the song on top. So in order to get that, we have to talk first about velocity. Now, if you change the uh, volume, if you change the velocity that you hit the drums or the cymbals with, it's gonna change the characteristic of the sound. And that's reflected in most modern DAWs. So if I play the hi-hats really quiet, and then I get louder, you'll hear the sound change. Same thing with the snare drum. So we have to use that. And uh, the first instrument that I'm gonna change is the hi-hat. Instead of playing all of the notes as hard as I can, I'm gonna alternate between loud and soft, and I'm not gonna play as hard as I can. And now I'm gonna play my groove. automatically sounds more like a real drummer playing real drums. Uh, the second instrument that I'm gonna change is the kick. Now I have uh, two kicks that are really close to each other. And the first one I'm gonna play a little quieter and the second one I'm gonna play a little louder. So I have, so you hear that? It's like a love dub, it's like a heartbeat. Now let's listen to that with the track. Okay, now the second thing I'm gonna do to uh, my software drums, it has nothing to do with technique. It's not about playing it. It's about reverb. So most uh, drum patches come dry. That means that there's no reverb on them. There might be a little bit of room sound. So let's look at Soundtrap and I'll show you what I'm talking about. It's really easy to see because <laughs> there's two knobs, room and reverb. Room is the sound of the room it's being recorded in. So listen to the snare drum. The snare is the loudest drum in the drum set. So I'm playing snare. Room's gone. It adds a little bit of depth, but I want a little bit of reverb. So I'm gonna keep playing the snare, and I'm gonna move this up. You don't want it like here, that's craziness. There we go. And what that's gonna do is um, it's gonna smooth out some of the harshness in the highs for the cymbals. Cymbals are notorious for giving away whether or not uh, drums are real or not. Like if you ever listen to a recording where uh, the bit rate is low, you'll hear it right away in the cymbals. They're like sound tinny and there's some artifacts in there. If you add a little bit of reverb, it rolls that off, it kind of smushes it all together and it makes it a little more pleasing sounding. So here is my drum groove now with a little bit of reverb. I added a little bit of variation, but let's listen to it with the track. Okay, the next tip, the third tip is um, about variation. So I added in some variation there. Not all drummers are gonna play the same groove the same way every time. They're gonna have some variation. So I might add in a couple more kicks every once in a while. I'm not gonna do it in like a regular pattern because then it sounds like a drum machine. I am also might add in some open hi-hat here and there just to give almost like a drum fill in between phrases, but not too much. So now I'm gonna play the same thing with the velocity changes, with the reverb, and I'm gonna add in some variation. So try to hear it. I'm not gonna say what I'm doing, but see if you can like identify when I'm adding new kick drums. Here we go.
close my hi-hat. Um, so you heard it there, it was every once in a while I just added in another kick. Every once in a while I played an open hi-hat, and that just made it sound like a real drummer was behind the kit making musical decisions. I guess the goal is think musically, and the tools that a drummer has, they don't have pitch, right? So they only have when to play and then how loud to play it. So those are the things that you're changing. Now the last one is one of my favorite things to do on drums. I'm not good at it. Um, I'm really jealous of the players that are good at it, but that is ghost notes. So ghost notes are usually played by the snare drum and it's just quieter. So um, here I'm gonna use the secondary snare attack as my backbeat and then I'm going to fill in with some quieter primary snare attacks. So like. Hear that? All right, so now let's play with the track. All right, and as you might have just heard, the more complex your musical choices are, the more difficult it is to play it in time. So um, you can always go into your recording and fix things. You can change the velocity of notes after the fact. You can move things over in time. Um, but just be aware that the more complex it is, the more difficult it is gonna be to play. Uh, so hopefully this helps uh, transform your drum tracks that you play on your instrument into something that's more dynamic, more interesting for the listener, and better for your song.